Autumn is the season when many shrubs and trees are decorated with their fruits. One of these shrubs is the wild rose, whose red fruits, although little known to the general public, have been used since antiquity as food but also as medicine. Their high content of vitamin C, 20 to 30 times higher than that of oranges, makes them a superfood and an important weapon in the fight against colds and flu. Our goal today is to get to know this plant, to collect its fruits and to prepare its syrup that will seal our body against infections. As stated earlier, rose hips were used since antiquity, but it was during the 40s that their use was intensified, at least in Britain. During World War II, there was a severe shortage of vitamin C in the United Kingdom due to the cessation of imports of oranges and lemons. This of course had an impact on the health of the population, and especially on young children. The authorities in research conducted on the local flora found that wild roses had 20 times more vitamin C than oranges. The Ministry of Health encouraged school children and scouts to pick the fruit and with recipe printed on leaflets, they gave instructions on how to prepare the syrup for use by young children. The picking of the rose hips became a tradition and until the decades of the 50s and 60s, many children were collecting the fruits for some pennies or a pound. Wild roses are evergreen or deciduous shrubs that can reach up to 5 meters high. This certain plant in front of us belongs to the species with the name Rosa agrestis. It can grow up to 2 meters, it has climbing arched stems with curved spines and flowers colored white or pink. The fruits are egg-shaped, fleshy, green at an early stage, changing to red in their maturity at the beginning of autumn. The fruit, as you see, has an ovoid shape, and if we cut it in half, we will see that it has many seeds, but also tiny hairs around them. We don't want these hairs because they are very irritating, and if ingested, they could cause irritation to the mouth and digestive tract. Back in the old days, kids used them as an itching powder. Here we see the fruit opened in half. We see the seeds and the tiny hairs around. When we discard them, we can eat them raw as they are. They have a very interesting taste that combines sweet and sour. The fruits remain in the bushes during the winter, which is why it is a valuable essential food for wildlife. For this reason, it is good not to pick all the fruit from the bushes, so that these creatures can survive the winter. Another thing I want to emphasize is never pick the rose hips without gloves, as I wrongly do right now. Contact with the thorns of the wild rose is quite painful. We are back from the mountain and ready to prepare our rose hip syrup. The first thing we have to do is to wash the fruits and discard their pedicel. For our recipe, we will need 1 kg of fruits, 3 liters of water and 450 grams of sugar. We put 2 liters of water in the pot and we bring it to boil. We finally chop the fruit in a blender and immediately throw it in the boiling water. The reason we first bring the water to boil and then add the rose hips is because at temperatures above 70 degrees Celsius, the enzymes that oxidize the ascorbic acid are deactivated, leaving the vitamin C unharmed. It takes 15 minutes of cooking below 60 degrees Celsius to cause significant loss of vitamin C. When the water comes back to boil, we remove it from the heat and let it sit aside for 15 minutes. The next step is to pass it through a cheesecloth, which will hold the fruit puree, the seeds and the hairs. We keep the juice aside, put the puree back in a saucepan and pour over 1 liter of boiling water. We bring it again back to boil, remove it from the heat and let it sit for 10 minutes and then pass it again through the cheesecloth. The amounts of ascorbic acid found in different species of wild rose and at different altitudes range between 106 to 2700 mg per 100 grams of fruit and then according to another research from 274 mg up to 1157 mg per 100 grams of fruit. The higher the altitude the plants grow, the better the ascorbic acid yield. We combine the two batches of juice in a clean pot. We bring it to boil and let it simmer at 90 to 95 degrees Celsius until the amount is reduced to 1 liter. Then we add 450 grams of sugar and continue cooking for another 5 minutes.
By that time, our syrup should be ready. Next, we fill with the syrup small glass bottles that we have sterilized by boiling them for 5 minutes. After filling them, put them in a deep pot with a newspaper or a piece of cloth at the bottom and cover them with water about 2cm above the cup. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, click on the bell and turn on the notification. Thank you for watching.